Nvidia have dropped their latest generation RTX 2000 series graphics cards, but post launch the hype train has pulled into the station. But there are some serious concerns with the new generation of these cards, which we will take a look at today. So the biggest problem with the RTX series launch is that the entire thing just feels forced and whether that's because Nvidia want to lock people into higher end cards before the launch of AMD's unreleased Navi GPUs or even segment themselves with different technology in the market like ray tracing and DLSS before Intel's eventual release of their dedicated graphics cards in 2020 or whether it has to do with the massive glut of 10 series cards that supposedly needs to be cleared out, we will just never know. But I do know one thing, and that is the 2000 series does feel like there are other intentions behind this launch. The Nvidia that I'm used to using, experiencing and reviewing over the last decade have never missed a beat and their products have been near or simply perfection itself. The 2000 series however though doesn't feel like perfection at all to me and it feels like a different bump in the road. I seriously think Nvidia would have been better off holding off at least a month or two to optimize their drivers and get the new technology like ray tracing and DLSS implemented into some actual playable games before release. Not to mention that this release was so rushed that I literally had two days to test, overclock, cross reference, double check and shoot and film an entire review which somehow I managed to pull off, though there are some other weird discrepancies that are occurring. First off, the ray tracing functionality. It's so important to Nvidia that it's the entire name of the graphics card itself, RTX. However, at launch, and as it stands now for me personally and for everyone who pre-ordered, there are no games or even benchmarks that utilize the real-time ray tracing. So right now it's a matter of hardware and waiting for the game dev optimization and game devs waiting for the hardware and a real chicken and egg conundrum of which should come first. For this reason, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is waiting for a ray tracing patch and Battlefield has been straight up postponed. But the fact that Nvidia is so confident in real-time ray tracing technology isn't necessarily a bad thing. Traditional rendering always needed a replacement. It was inevitable. But reviewers such as myself and all the other awesome YouTubers who reviewed these cards really can't sit here and benchmark hype. No matter how hard we try. Well, actually, I'm wrong. Uh, Tom's hardware somehow managed to. Though jokes aside, I think releasing a new architecture of graphics cards without at least even a playable demo from Nvidia really makes the cards seem like a new GTX lineup instead of RTX, for the time being. Not to mention the raw performance gains themselves just aren't offering the value, like any previous series release of Nvidia cards have. I remember the 1080, the 1070, 970, 780, 670 cards when they were dropped and the excitement was there, the value was there, and of course the performance gains were there. Though ultimately I think the losers here were actually the pre-orderers who might be disappointed at the lack of performance for their very hefty investment. But will the long-term over-the-air improvements like deep learning, anti-aliasing, driver updates and ray tracing, or the holy grail of graphics, be enough to bring the value back, rewarding early adopters in due time? We'll definitely have to retest and compare the performance and optimization in a month or two, so definitely stay tuned for that. But many people are saying Nvidia only did this because they have the breathing room to release a slight performance bump and all the wiggle room to push their new technology first, with performance increases being that of a lesser priority. This does seem kind of true and the why is actually quite simple and that's because AMD haven't posed any real competition for years now. Vega was a bigger flop than that of a failed backflip and Intel are yet to spread their wings when it comes to GPU development. Though taking a look at Nvidia's own top end GTX 1080 Ti which trades blows with the RTX 2080 and if you compare it to the founders versus founders it even beats it by a slight margin as well as having those next gen features like ray tracing and tensor cores but in Australia for example you can currently buy GTX 1080 Ti's brand new on eBay right now for as little as a thousand Aussie dollars with a 20% coupon code which comes in at 400 Aussie dollars less than the cheapest 2080 available and this is the crux what you can buy these cards for on the shelves right now not promised msrps that retailers don't adhere to and of course if you're willing to do a little bit of local hustle or even ebay hustle then you can get the cards off a fallen miner for dirt cheap get them deals folks you won't regret it and of course be sure to leave your deals in the comments below i love reading that good stuff
Though the real shiner of the 2000 series looks like it is indeed the 2080 Ti, though the problem is that it's priced so far out of realism to what we are used to, I think it's too much too soon to be honest. I mean, we have seen over the years a gradual increase in prices of the flagship cars. Take for instance the Titan in 2015, then compared to the Titan X Pascal in uh, 2016, there was a $200 price hike. But this time around, it seems like it's bang straight up there with a 70% price hike over your previous TI cards. And you get the same amount of VRAM and about 25% more performance. That's a lot of money and quite a hefty premium. And looking at our previous Titan X Pascal release, which was August 2016, that was $1,200 too, and offered an 84% price increase over the previous reigning 980 Ti. So the pricing seems way too close to our Titanverse previous TI modeling to be considered a proper TI card in my opinion. And let's take a minute to remember that the Titan X Pascal was over 60% faster than a 980 TI and also performed over 35% better than a GTX 1080. Let's also not forget that the 1080 Ti is still a beast of a card with the 2080 Ti only pulling about 25 to 30% ahead. So it's not getting any worse, but it will be getting cheaper for the 1080 Ti with the release of these newer cards. Which doesn't mean the 2080 and 2080 Ti are bad cards. They will still perform better than the 1080 Ti, namely the 2080 Ti at 4K. It's just when I do the maths, and after having buried my head in benchmarks for the previous two days, I didn't really come to a proper conclusion in my previous RTX 2080 video. But now that I've had time to step back and think about it, it's just a real shame Nvidia launched this card so soon because there isn't anything to show really. Even having just one title properly utilizing this tech to its full extent would have been so much better in my opinion. Even just one title utilizing DLSS and another utilizing ray tracing would have been fine too. Though we will still see with the NVIDIA driver updates and also video game updates how much NVIDIA were in a rush to release these 2000 series cards and or if they want to truly sell out the overstock of 10 series cards that came from overproduction for what was seen as continued throughout all of 2018 demand from miners. Perhaps we should be all thanking InnoSilicon. They did us gamers all a real solid. Or did they? Though it should also be mentioned that GPU mining is becoming more and more inefficient in terms of return on investment and with Nvidia tailoring cores to workloads such as Tensor for deep learning and RT cores for ray tracing, as well as improving on efficiency of their traditional CUDA cores, it makes it just that much harder to justify a GPU for mining in 2018, hopefully deterring future GPU miners from the newest generation of Nvidia GPUs. Though at the end of the day, if you wanted the best value for money, the 10 series currently trumps the 20 series in my opinion. But if you don't care at all and want the best performance like 4K 60 FPS, the 20 series cards and more specifically the 2080 Ti will handle that, as well as supporting all those new technologies that are still just demos. Though if it's one thing, don't worry, you won't be left out if you didn't pre-order. And never forget, patience really is a virtue. Though in conclusion, traditional rendering is undeniably outdated, but I can't help but honestly feel just disappointed with the 20 series launch. And I really honestly want to know what you guys think about the 20 series launch too. Uh, let me know in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to hit that like button. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And I mean, it just doesn't seem like the Nvidia I know, that's for sure. Not the one that I'm used to anyway. Uh, but with that said, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. Like, B-U-Y. Or just, just buy it. <laughs>